Thank you everyone for joining. This is our regularly scheduled bi-weekly community call, um, the one right after Cosmoverse. So welcome everyone back. Hopefully the people that went to Cosmoverse uh, enjoyed it and the people that didn't go, hopefully you had a lot of FOMO because um, uh, I think I think I would have had if I didn't go. But uh, yes, thank you everyone for joining. There's uh, two things on the agenda that I wanted to highly cover and they might evolve into larger conversations. Um, first, just wanted to give you guys an update as this is the beginning of Q4. I um, wanted to give you guys an update of what will what is planned for Q4 as like our work scopes, um, and also uh, what is planned to be included in the next release, which we are calling Twilight. So let me share my screen. Awesome. So within Q4, we have a couple things that we want that we will be working on. Um, specifically, with the things that will be included in uh, the uh, Twilight release are the first phase of uh, Base App Plus um, Plus. So we're implementing uh, ABC 1.0. Um, which what does this include? It includes prepare proposal, prepare proposal, and process proposal. Um, this leads to uh, this will be released as part of O47. Our goal is to start test nets um, next Friday, Saturday, a public test net where everyone's welcome to join and try and take down the network, try and find some bugs um, as we do some QA alongside the Tendermint team. Um, the next thing that we want to include within, uh, uh, so I'll go down the list. So we took a small pause on uh, separating all SDK modules into standalone Go modules. The reason why we did this is because we are actually, um, we actually completed phase three and we're on phase four. So what phase four is, is making sure all the modules are de decoupled and there's no cyclical dependencies and then spinning modules out into their own Go mods. So we stopped this because we wanted Twilight to be our last like mono repo release um, in order to get the release out sooner um, for teams like the hub and really everyone who wants to use an app side mempool. Um, so we're going to be continuing that. Uh, we're also continuing on this uh, core app framework. So um, Zep Inject is in its alpha, um, in its beta alpha stage. So it can already be used in 047. You could have a partial um, application written. Um, as an example of where you can find a partial application is, I can't see. Um, if I can't see, you probably can't see either. Um, is basically an app dot in where you can find an example is so in app config we actually have a uh, an example of how it would be to use a bunch of modules within uh, dep inject um, and then in app.go it's a hybrid model where you're still using some modules in the app.go but they are mostly in app config so that will also be part of 047 um, the long-awaited liquid staking. So the next era of staking within Cosmos, um, we're working. So um, spending the most of the rest of the evening and tomorrow updating liquid staking module and getting it ready to be merged into mainline SDK. Um, and so this will be an optional feature um, within the SDK. So it's not mandatory that your chain adopts liquid staking. The one uh, thing that changes is, um, and I believe it's uh, more for the better, is essentially what is min, what is your min self bond becomes uh, what we, what uh, Zach and Inclusion are calling a, a exemption factor. Um, so if you don't want to use like the staking module, you'd set the parameter exemption factor to zero, but your min self bond essentially becomes how much of a, uh, of a self delegation quote unquote is uh, registered as exempt. Um, exemption. Um, and so it's recreating the same thing. There's an explicit message now to leave the validator set to unbond instead of just like really removing yourself bond and, and then you automatically start unbonding. Now there's an explicit message to leave. And so this provides somewhat of a better UX and more explicit UX for validators. 
Next, we have interchain security. So as part of the interchain security, um, we uh, the interchain security team did a bunch of changes within the SDK. Um, and so we're just making sure those are merged into mainline. So when interchain security comes about, then the uh, that whole ecosystem can use mainline SDK instead of having to run off of a fork. Um, we want to release alpha of sign mode textual. So Amari is leading this um, and working alongside Jim and a few others um, from Agoric uh, in order to deliver alpha uh, sign mode textual. Um, we're also working on something we call uh, auto CLI. So we all know that writing CLI is cumbersome. It's extra boilerplate that we all copy paste into multiple modules. And a big theme for 2023 and Q4 is uh, getting rid of all this boilerplate in the Cosmos SDK. Um, and part of that is just using uh, writing a great tool that basically looks at the uh, looks at your modules or looks at modules of a different chain and then generates you a CLI that you can use. Um, it's actually not, it won't code gen use um, commands. Instead, it will you, it will be um, during runtime, you'll be able to interact with different uh, protofiles. Cool thing here is part of this is also we'll be able to provide a tool with an SDK to interact with um, all the chains that use um, uh, 047, every chain that uses 047 and going forward, we'll be able to use the SIMD uh, CLI tool in order to interact with all of them. Um, so that's kind of cool and also helps reduce boilerplate. Um, we're still working on uh, rewriting and simplifying CLI tests. So we're just about wrapping that up. Um, and this will go in tandem with separating all SDK uh, to, into go into go stand, into standalone Go modules. Um, we're still working on a design and thinking through uh, various designs for protobuf package versioning and how to better structure the repo when we kind of go into this standalone Go module way of how do how can someone use a module um, with different semantic versions of different modules? So it's not like everyone has to be on the same version. Um, so that's like a large endeavor that we're taking on. Something that we actually don't have on this, um, two things that we don't have on this um, on this roadmap. And one of them uh, is being, um, the work is being split between uh, an engineer from the notional side and an engineer from our side. Um, they're actually both going with uh, a design of rewriting how key format works on IVL. Um, John from the SDK side is going to work with um, Ketchark from Notional, and they're both going with uh, different approaches. I believe Ketchark is writing the implementation of write version node and node path and tree. Um, John is proposing instead of path of tree and version as the key um, to use an uh, order number. And the idea of rewriting the keys is predominantly around data locality. So we all know that when the, the chain becomes very large, um, like a archive node, it becomes querying a node becomes um, immensely slow because instead of going directly to where the key is, you actually are randomly searching disk um, for that key because the, currently the keys are just a hash of the node instead of it. And so it's not structured on disk. Um, by structuring it on disk, um, I mean, everyone here works on computers. So everyone here has an idea of how CPU and memory works. Um, and disks work by structuring on disk, we get a lot better performance and things that people have spent years on by building operating systems and CPUs. Um, so there will be an ADR landing on that. Um, to to show and illustrate the two possible approaches and also illustrate where we stand currently. Um, the second approach is um, we've kind of revived. You're fine. We've kind of revived the discussion um, within as part of like 2023. We want to think about storage and performance quite a bit on top of reducing boilerplate and fixing how basically anyone writes the SDK. But one thing that came to mind is kind of parallelize, uh, parallelize execution. And so um, as we start work, as we work with the informal team to spec up the current storage package and uh, the current write and read semantics of the store package, um, 
once we complete that, then we start we start thinking about like what is next for storage? How what is it design? Is it ADR forty or is it a different design? How do we also incorporate ideas around parallel um, parallelized execution? Um, and so this will be kind of a more of a research design topic for Q four. Um, out of these, does anyone have any questions? but we're only getting the benefits of this for like less than a week, which are exclusive. So, uh, and then it's gonna end. Awesome. Then next, want to touch on the Twilight release. So touched on, under, on earlier within the uh, Q4 update, but essentially, um, what is a big change that, that landed within, what are some big changes that landed within, um, that will be landing in Twilight? Um, the, the PREMS module is entering uh, deprecation slash maintenance mode. Um, the PREMS module will live on for chains to use it, but each module right now going forward, 047 going forward, will be handling its own parameters. Um, this allows better validation and also reduces, um, and also once and for all, gets rid of uh, amino uh, JSON encoding on disk. Um, and so part of this endeavor, we actually had to write a new consensus module that handles the consensus parameters of Tendermint. Um, like I said, you're, you don't have to migrate your modules to use, the, to use this new design. You're still free to continue um, with, the, uh, with the old parameter module that will live on within the SDK, so you have nothing to worry about. Um, it just won't be used by the core modules of the SDK. Um, next, uh, we have the base app. Uh, I would invite everyone to dive into the lovely work of Matt and Giancarlo, um, if I can find the PR, of uh, writing a default mempool implementation. So this is open and ready for review. So I'll post it in the chat so people can go and take a look. Oh no, okay, there we go. Um, and so I give it a read. Um, we went with a specific design which um, has two dimensions, priority and sender nonce um, because of course, like sender nonce has become a big topic in the realm of rule layers. Um, so we wanted to make sure that is covered. Of course, this is like it says in the title, it's a default. So it, so you as a chain uh, developer can also write your own mempool implementation and use that instead of this. Um, so invite everyone to give that a gander. And then we have the base app integration PR. So uh, Matt and Bez and Giancarlo are working on integrating that into base app in order to start test nets next week. Um, so that is that one. Any questions on this work? Yes. Yeah. Custom mempool in the world. Like, uh, we pick a custom mempool. Sorry, I think we're a Validators can only do much, and uh, but yeah, I actually didn't know that people were using them for uh, relaying. Uh, sorry, can you? I, I, you were cutting out for a second. Could you repeat? Oh, the sorry question? about that. Um, yes, the question is: people are using custom methods for relay, not just like uh, on a validator road and doing math or. No, I'm so, um, sorry. Just um, the idea of using sender nonce as a um, as a dimension within the mempool is primarily because if like you submit a hundred transactions, um, individual transactions from a single account with different nonces, there is the probability that nonce a higher nonce will execute. There is a probability that a higher nonce will execute before a lower nonce, making um, the lower nonce fail when it comes up for execution. Um, and so if we order the transactions via nonce in end priority in the mempool, then you can be assured that nonce um, four will always come before nonce five and the transaction will be executed before nonce five. Um, and so that's the idea there. We heard from 
um, the Hermes team that uh, when they submit a lot of transactions, they always get like um, non errors. Um, and so we tried to alleviate that uh, issue um, by adding it as a second dimension in the mempool. Nice, thank you. Yes. Um, so Ida says, presuming that all transactions have been successfully related to the validator selecting these from its mempool for proposal. Yes, you are correct. Um, any other questions there? Awesome. Um, we also went over the, sorry, go ahead. Uh, and I, now I passed all the wrong button time. That's uh, no more questions. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, so uh, we went over the param changes. Uh, the liquid staking module, um, touched on it earlier. So you've most likely seen um, a lot of commotion within the Cosmos Twitter and last week at Cosmoverse around liquid staking. Um, so we've seen and talked to a few teams and they wanted to adopt liquid staking. And so that's why we opted to bring it inside the Cosmos SDK so they can be reassured that, um, um, th that we can be reassured that the liquid staking module is up to um, par with the normal staking module. Um, so that is the thing. That, so the, the design that I mentioned uh, earlier is about the min self bond technically going away. Um, there is an explicit min self bond anymore. It's called exemption. We touched on this as well. Um, and so you as a validator, so um, you know, many of us operate validators, and many times the issue is that like your validator key um, your account key for your validator doesn't have any funds, but you're actually self-bonding your own, let's say, atoms from a different account on your validator. But like on, on UIs, it only shows that you're actually self-bonding maybe one atom. And so the nice thing about like this exemption, um, it can be used as a min self-bond and you can register other accounts that you use um, that you are like bonding to your validator. So it's like all of a sudden, if you have 10 accounts, each with a thousand atoms, um, for whatever reason, you can, and you're delegating to yourself, you can prove that you are self-bonding greater than what is only in your account, uh, in your validator account. Um, for myself, I, I find this quite interesting and compelling, um, and, I, and I hope other people do as well. Of course, if you want to use the liquid staking module um, and the staked assets, then you would just uh, bump the exemption factor to a non-zero number. Any questions on this? Awesome. Interchain security. Again, we've all heard about it. Um, it's uh, like liquid staking module. It's uh, bringing in the next next um, era of Cosmos after liquid staking um, is live then uh, we're merging some changes that the interchange security team needs within the SDK. They're all minimal um, and don't require any sort of overhead and work from the client teams to, to use it or not use it. Um, and yeah, and the next one is auto CLI. So um, Aaron, is, Aaron and uh, Aaron's working very hard to get an early implementation of auto CLI so we can use it. Um, so chains and mo new module uh, authors can use it instead of having to write their queries CLI. So CLI queries will be the uh, first version with messages and transactions um, coming at a later point. But uh, at least having queries, I think, is uh, a huge step forward. Any questions so far? Yeah. Nothing. Um, those are the those are the items that I had highest in my mind. Um, now I I want to uh, open it for anyone to bring up the discussion point, bring up any concerns, anything that they feel like we are missing as implementing on the SDK, and stuff they would like to see. Um, does anyone have anything in mind? 
Okay. Um, some a templating tool. Um, mm -hmm. So we did, when, when we built Craft, we started with like a pre-release uh, 46 Senate. And um, excuse me, um, I think that like two options, right? Um, one, I could get a hold of Ignite. I, I, I've got to check if if the CMD folder still does thing. I wouldn't really be okay because we we've spent. I mean, when I say we, I mean like the notional team. But then again, there's the greater of Cosmos, and I think it's much much more than that. So I you save a lot of time using Ignite in the beginning, but then you need to upgrade your chain and you know, lose a vast quantity of time. Um, so I, I feel like the, the right path forward there would be to reach out, see if they can, like if they're willing to basically like mirror the, the map structure, then that's super. And you know, they should probably be our templating tool. They have a templating tool, just adapted telescope. I'm happy about all this stuff. And if not, then we should probably put an incredibly simple one into the SDK that might source the code out of the map folder, but it should include, like, there, there should be uh, IBC integration in that template as well, I think. Yeah, I, I can see us uh, doing that. Um, I think like it, 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 it would be amazing to, um, we can open an issue and open an epic to just like encapsulate that and also work with existing teams um, who are thinking about this as well. Um, but it'd be amazing to really put a great focus on this once we, um, reduce the total amount of like lines of code within modules. So it's like when we have like ORM or like the storage API, um, when you don't have to, when you, events are like minimalized, um, when queries and messages and the message server and all CLIs are auto-generated, then that reduces the total amount of code that you have to write. Um, we want to reduce the amount of code you write in a module by at least 50%. Um, and then, Anything above that is like amazing, and we we really want to aim for that. And then at that point, like including a, a templating tool would be like immensely easy. Um, also, we could even include like a tool that like provides a default depth inject config that includes IPC and that you can extend with your own modules too. So that's like a. Um, it also it makes sense to defer it because at that time the tooling would look quite different. Yeah, exactly. Um, it would look drastically, um, drastically different. Um, we're hoping within 2023 SDK will look entirely different, basically almost like a new product. Is there anything else anyone else wants to talk about? Since since the team is very focused on Twilight um, and just got back from Cosmoverse, and uh, us as a team don't we don't have too much too many design discussions to have with the community. So um, I would invite anyone to just speak up, ask any questions they have, any concerns. Sure, Marco. Um, I'm not sure how well my audio is coming across um hopefully well it, it, it sounds good okay great because I, I have a kind of a complicated thing that we're pushing into the design phase for provenance um so one of the things that we have so for, for just a quick background for everybody we primarily deal with financial institutions um and they have a lot of regulations and a lot of kind of extra constraints one of the things that was identified that we as a risk of concern, and it of course came out of the whole tornado cash OFAC dusting accounts thing is that 
Cosmos-based chains use a single account pool for funds received. Anybody can send funds and they go directly to an account. So one of the things that we had been discussing is what it would look like if Providence were to do a custom bank module where um, it was like a, a phased send. So if you had accounts under certain circumstances and you sent funds to another address, that address would have to accept those funds um, under certain conditions. And so it's kind of an interesting piece. It's pretty early, but since you mentioned you were looking for things to talk about, and I know you're discussing some of the design of modularity for the SDK going forward, and you know something like this would be a potential case where the Providence chain would have to do quite a bit of work on their own bank module. That's kind of an interesting thing to think about. Um, yeah, this actually, um, in my mind, this kind of ties into a discussion uh, but I started and I actually started having this discussion with the bear chain folks. Um, and essentially the thought, I'm posting the discussion in the chat. Um, essentially the thought is like isolating different modules. Um, so let's say we can take, a, we can take staking, for example, staking does very, a lot of different things. It manages validator sets. It does like delegated POS and it does a couple other things, but it's like, um, what if we were to like pull out the validator set, um, validator set uh, manager into its own module or into a sub module of staking that can be reused by different modules. Um, same thing with governance all of a sudden um, and potentially with bank as well, like the core components of like bank are pulled out into sub modules. So if you were to write this module that, that you're speaking about, you could pull in these core components and then write like the top layer yourself. So you don't have to write everything from the ground up or you don't have to like fork the entire bank module. Um, and I think this kind of like streamlines development because for example, with staking, it's like a lot of people who want to modify staking fork the staking module and then modify it. But staking module is like very big and overly complex for what it's trying to achieve. Um, so that could, this could like help in that, in that design phase somewhat related to that same concept. Um, so provenance obviously has a lot of restrictions around different tokens. And I think we're probably the only ones that actually have many different tokens, some of them with send disabled flag. Um, the current design of the bank module has a send function, which has the, um, I, I would almost call them security constraints. So there's the uh, blocked addresses, there's the send disable check and things, those all happen in the message server. So as part of a transaction or a message in a transaction, but the keeper itself, those methods don't have any of those restrictions. Um, and so we've seen this, this error come up in Cosm Wasm and we see it in IPC. And I think we probably are the only ones impacted by it, but um, these chains will, and initially they forget to put in the blocked address check because they're using the keeper commands directly and the keeper commands don't have like anything that marks them as unsafe or missing those constraints. Mm. And so the default implementation is usually missing those pieces. And so like, for example, currently the IBC module is missing the send enable checks on the DOMs because that only exists in the message server implementation. So overall, some of these kinds of pieces, I think, as you're talking about structuring code, it, it might make sense if they were injected as a function where you can do the custom validation. And there's just a default implementation that says, uh, you know, does the check for blocked addresses or does the, chalk, the check for send disable, et cetera. Um, I think that would make it a little bit more clear when you're using some of those more privileged APIs that this is the default validation. Yeah, I um, I think like the even higher level is like the that this point brings up is like something um, we tried to fix many years ago, but didn't do it well um, back in like when we were when we were still all at AIB um, was like we need to internalize these like very privileged privileged functions into like an internal folder within bank um instead of like exposing it because it's like the developer many times since poor godocs um doesn't know if they should be using this api or not um and just putting it in an internal folder and routing them to the correct function that does this check um is 
is like better. way better than, and it also reduces the API surface that like developers can um, shoot their shoot their self in the foot. But, um, so yeah, so that's definitely a, a really good point. I, I think you know that that actually touches on one area where we've had some concerns because we have a we have to maintain a fork because there's some very minor wiring between some of the modules that we have to have. Um, we have a very different fee system than most chains, so we rewired all the anti handlers and things. When 46 first came out, we were super excited about the new structure, which was abandoned when we were kind of annoyed about that. Um, but that was, we were hoping that that initial or that extra flexibility would give us the ability to skip um, our fork. We could just wire in our own components. And so I think it's worth underlining the fact that the, the, the additional flexibility needs to be there. So even if you start internalizing some of these APIs as unsafe, there still needs to be a way for people to wire in um, custom implementations because we don't all do things the same SDK way. The 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 wired in uh, custom implementations of uh, different anti handlers, right? Or in this case, it was middleware. Um, middleware, basically. Yeah. That's a good point. I need to resurrect that image, that issue. Very open image and plan um because yeah i think you weren't the only team that was actually looking forward to that change so i need to um dive back into that um and that's that's very good anything else i think that's enough from me thanks <laughs> how's um <clears throat> I guess a question for you. Um, uh, I forgot his name. Let me just find the PR around ADR38 and like the HashiCorp plugin system. Uh -oh, that'd be Ergos. Yeah. Do you know um, how he's how he's doing it? Um, maybe if we should like jump in and help on it. Um. So we're in the middle of trying to get a, a 13 release out, which is our next mm -hmm. release. And so he got pulled away a little bit on that, but oh, okay. it's still a, a pretty big deal. I, I would like to see um, maybe some assistance and some collaboration with the core team, just because it's a it's a pretty complex issue. Um, yeah. So we did we did backport the old ADR38 to a 44 and 45 um, because TechRig.com um, was asking for it, so that exists there. Um, and so I'll put this back on my agenda and quickly jump in. It might be that we pull in the like right semantic changes, um, and then in a different PR, we add in like the HashiCorp plugin system. Um, so yeah, so I'll, I'll talk to the team and maybe we can knock it out quickly, at least the like pulling in that part and then the whole plugin system we can bring in, um, Maybe it's actually once you remove the plugin system, it becomes actually a, a really small PR. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. We, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to keep this open and talk with the team to see on how we can get at least the changes to the streamer in, and then um, and then in a separate PR, look at adding the HashiCorp plugin system. Okay. Yeah, I think that that would be good. I mean, the, the fundamental constraint that we have, which I guess I'll just underline because it's it's a thing that, that we would have to have is we need to have deterministic streaming of that state, even if it compromises the functionality of that node. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's a guy that um, I can't remember his name. He's, he was very adamant about the definition of what events are as a one-way calls and that's that's fine in our case though we we absolutely would cause that node yeah. to crash or you know go into to fast sync catch-up mode so that it could keep all of its state synchronized with the external and systems like, yeah, that, that totally makes sense um yeah i know I, I don't think you're the only team that would uh want this um and since it's an optional thing then we can uh it's up to the node operator to decide on how they want to run it. Um, and for your application specifically, um, maybe you can even default it on the uh, the config changes um, in the root command uh, root command uh, 
function. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for reminding me of this. Um, anything else from anyone? Otherwise, we can end the call and this community call earlier. Definitely be prepared for the next one. The next one, there will be way more things to discuss. Awesome. Awesome. Then, just want to give a give a quick shout out to the the SDK team: Matt, Benz, Julian, Facundo, um, John, Emery, Aaron, and everyone working on the O forty seven release. Um, uh, it's like we're we're getting there, and I, I'm. I know we just released 046 about two months ago, um, and we're already talking about the next release. But uh, hopefully, this is able to prove to everyone that SDK velocity is uh, definitely picking up. It is, and by the way, the release is looking good. I'm watching it. That's nice. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Then, uh, everyone, enjoy the weekend and uh, talk to you in two weeks. Thanks, guys. Later.